Hello everyone. Um, I thought I'd do a review of the Swansea Newcastle match that just happened. Uh, it ended 2-2. Uh, I'd like to share my thoughts on the proceedings and I don't know, have a little discussion in the comments. Who knows? So, as a Swansea fan, uh, I'll talk today is as we started the match. Uh, there was a few changes. Jazz Richards came in at right back instead of Angel Rangel, who suspended, and uh, Wilfred Borney came back for Bahata Timbi Gomes. Now, before the match started, I was a bit concerned with Jazz Richards playing as well as um, Federico Fernandez. Basically, with Fernandez, the little I've seen of him so far, I feel he's very, like, positionally not very good at it. Which is very strange for a player to come out of Serie A, a league that concentrates on, like, the defensive side of the game. You have to be everywhere, like, in the right position at all times. It's very defensive minded, very tactically, you have to be aware. And I think Fernandez isn't that sort of player. If you look at Fernandez, he's very he's got the right build to be a centre half. He's like six foot four or six foot three, I'm not sure. He's very tall, athletic, he's good at header in the ball. It's just for me I feel he's not very positionally that good. And he does have moments in the game where he turns off, which is which is a bit like when you play in the Premier League you don't want to play it and do that. But I think he has the potential to be very good. Anyway. Um, we start the match off at the first e first 15 minutes of the game. I felt like it was all Swansea. We dominated the start of the match, and Newcastle couldn't keep up with our play. We're very good at starting matches. I've seen this season, like for example West Brom, and um, well, yeah, we went ahead on the 17th minute with Wilfred Borney scoring. Um, it seemed like played on the middle. Uh, I think it was Key who passed it to Borney. Borney had a little run with it. Give the six and six and seen the run back one two straight through back and goal and he slotted it past the keeper one nil now Borney you could see the frustration was building in his game because he hasn't scored this uh, he hasn't scored that this season once he scored though he uh, ran off to the side and pulled out this dance move now that's why I think he's been frustrated so far this season because he wants to demonstrate the whole world that dance move it's a bit weird one you know if you're an African player you can get away with it like Asimo Gian, he got he's a good dancer. With a body good dancer, but if you're a player like Wayne Rooney, you know, from England, I reckon if you pulled out moves like Borney did for his goal today, you look a bit mental, but I can't say anything about Wilfred Borney. I love his dancing. I love this celebration when he's like, I'm here. I don't know what that's about, but it looks brilliant. Um, yeah, as I said, Sigson had a huge hand in that goal and was instrumental throughout the first half. Now, after that, about the 30th minute ta uh, mark, I feel like the biggest moment of the match is for Swansea to finish the game off um, I know we finished the game off in the 30th minute but I feel like if this would have went in it would have changed the game completely basically we had a, uh, a free kick out on the right, wide right Sigson took it came in, he like out swung the cross in uh, towards Ki Sung Young and all he had to do from about 5 yards out was just put a power header behind it into the net it goes 2-0 now for some reason with Ki even though he's a very tall player and very like strong, he hasn't got any like head and prowess at all. I like he, I think he's a very good player, but when you're like five yards out and all you have to put is a solid head behind the ball, I feel like that's a bit disappointing from him and if you had put that in I think the game would have been dead. I think Newcastle head would have dropped and as I said the game would have been dead. Now, watching the Newcastle player, I thought it was a bit weird because the way they were playing, it was kind of like a training match. And when I say that, it's you w when you got the ball. Usually, when you're playing a match for full time, you want to get in it. You're always in the face of everyone. You're like battling for everything. But the Newcastle players were very laid back. They get the ball, pass it off, get the ball, pass it off, and they didn't see any desire in it. But it was a constructive play. And now I don't know if we got the mindset that they were a bit relaxed, that we got relaxed, because we weren't closing the down enough. And their goal through Pape Cissé was brilliant, it was a lot, a lot of passes I remembered, it came down the left, Neil Taylor could have done better in my opinion with dealing with the cross, but it came in really quickly near post, Pape Cissé was there, flicked it on, 1-1. One, one. Now, as I said, we dominate the first half, but when you're only one goal ahead, you can't really be surprised if team in the uh, team gets equal in the game, because this is the Premier League, the, most, the best league there is in the world, you know? Uh, I was very impressed by Newcastle's players. Um, the one three that stood up for me were Cruel, Yanma, and Colback. Uh, less so Dummer, Amiobi, and Colacini. Now, for me, for Colacini, 
he's a second centre back, and what I mean by that is, if you've got a really powering, tall, strong, athletic defender near, near him who's very tactically aware, I feel like Colchini's the perfect centre back to play alongside that person. Now at Newcastle, he's the number one centre back. He's the important centre back, which I don't think really suits them. Uh, with Colchini, who he's the type of player who likes to get in the face of the striker straight away or in the face of the attacking midfielder straight away. So he's there and he wants to get involved. But now Williamson doesn't really let him do that and he has to stick, sit back a bit. So again, going back to our first goal, I think that's how it came because it came through the middle. Colchini, he wants to get in your face, but he can't do that with uh, Williamson alongside him. Um, anyway, half time came. We went back in. Level, I know, we should be winning, but in the Premier League, you should be happy with a point and a half time in the field. If you've got the base there to grow into the second half, you're, you're doing well. So, second half started. We started the brightest again, and we went 2 1 up in the 50th minute. Now, I'm very happy with this goal because, for me, Wayne Routledge, he's changed totally in front of the goal in the last two seasons. We go back three years ago, and he didn't score in the Premier League in his entire career. He's like 26 at this time, and if you can remember, he he burst on the scene when he was like 17. Now that is a long time to not go, score a goal in the Premier League, and now for some reason he's picked it up a level, and he's scoring it seems like once every seven games, which is pretty good for a winger in my opinion. And you know he gets the crosses as well. He's he's a very influential player for Swansea. Uh, the goal he scored, it was kind of like a dink over the keeper, and uh, this might sound a bit like praising too much, but it was a very messy s goal, as in Messi left a nice chip on the goalkeeper, which what what Routledge did. Crew did get a touch to it, but there's enough power and enough precision on it to count. Uh, Sigson had a big hand on this goal as well, as I mentioned. Um, my opinion. Routledge should be in the 23 of England. Now, a player that is in that 23, which in my opinion shouldn't be, is John Joe Shelby. Now, Shelby, so far this season, has been Swansea's biggest link in the start of 11, in my opinion. Uh, this match he played really well, I, I won't say anything about that. But it seemed like the 60th minute came, and for me, Shelby wilters in a match. He, like, at the end of the match, he always dies off a bit. So, in the 60th minute, he got his yellow card, which uh, is his fifth of the season, I think I'm correct in saying that, which means he misses the next match, obviously. Um, so, I feel like when the 60th minute came, this is a massive changing point in the match. Um, Newcastle are a very fit team, I noticed. As I said, we started off very brightly against them, we had a better game plan, game plan than them. But I feel like their fitness helped them out massively and was a ma massive favour to them for the, what, the reason why they drew the match. Um, so Tim Crew was very exceptional from like our goal up until their goal. He saved many shots. I remember Borny having like a really powerful shot bottom left hand corner. Crew had a hand over it, saved it. Brilliant for him. It's not for Swansea, obviously. And um, it just seemed like we were hitting at the door, couldn't get in, couldn't get in, couldn't get in. And when that happens, you know what's going to happen. 2-2, two, two, Newcastle drew equal. Um, uh, it came down our, well, Newcastle's right, our left. Uh, Neil Taylor's side again, like the first goal. Um, it started originally for me, the, the turning point for that goal was Fernandez was very rash and went in for a challenge. And once you get to the floor and you don't get the ball, you're out of the game. So he's on the floor. We've got one centre back left. I don't know if Taylor dropped in for Fernandez at the centre back or whatever. Anyway, he wasn't in a left back position. They run down the left. Ball comes in. Cisse, who'd done absolutely nothing in the match apart from scoring two goals, had a tap in. Now Cisse seems to be prolific from four yards out because, as I said, in the match he'd done absolutely nothing. But I like that type of player. If you can score a goal, you're a good striker, in my opinion. Even if you're absolutely shit in the rest of the match. When you play in and you score, you're brilliant. Um, Taylor, as I talk him about him again, uh, two leg goals came down the left, as I said. I feel like he hasn't got that competition he had with Ben Davis. Now, last season, even though he was second choice of Ben Davis, when he did play, he played very well. The first thing that comes to my head is that cross and goal against Arsenal, and he played against very well against Arsenal in that 2-2 two -two draw. Uh, the only mistake I can think of him doing last season was when we played Everton in the, cap, uh, in the Cup. 
he passed it back and I think Naismith scored against Vaughan was it Tremel? I'm not sure who the keeper was but that's the only mistake I can think of from Taylor last season now it seems like a lot of the goals we can see this season so far have come from the left now I don't know I don't know if that's because Taylor is been fit last six days ago because he hasn't got that competition at left back or if he's like slowed down to play because he doesn't seem as quick as what he used to be like two or three seasons ago before his injury anyway I digress this is like the 80th, 80th minute now and Monk decides to do his first changes in the match which I thought was a bit weird if he had made those changes in the 60th minute I feel we would have had a different game and I reckon we could have put the, bed, uh, the game to bed so the 60th minute came and he'd done two changes he brought off Dyer for Montero can't really fault that it's a good decision in my opinion and then he took off our most influential player in my opinion Sigurdsson for Emnes now I have no problem whatsoever with Emnes I think he's a fantastic option from the bench Emnes is the type of player that doesn't really get influenced by the mood of the game for example if you're up against it and you get dominated 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 Emnes will play the same as what he will do if you're winning 4-0 he's always up for it always thinking ahead and always going for the goal um, I feel like what Monk could have done instead of taking Sigurdsson off was maybe go 4-1-4-1 as opposed to 4-3-2-1 at uh, 4-2-3-1 yeah that's right um, with Shelby going off, Key playing as a holding midfielder, and then we have the forward four, like we do in a 4-2-3-1, with Emnez playing amongst the lines there, finding spaces in the opposition back four. I think that's what we could have done, but again, if we would have gone that, we might have been inviting pressure on from Newcastle, so I have no really bad issues about taking Sigson off, but I think as soon as we took Sigson off, the game was dead. Um so as I said the game went on, the game went on, we dominated last 10 minutes, no goal, 2-2, final score. Um, you can't really be disappointed with that, as I said Newcastle looked very threatening in the box, they didn't do anything outside the box but once they were in there you go crap on yourself, I feel like it was a very lazy defensive dis display by Swansea, uh, which is something we have to learn from, you know what I mean. Um, let's talk about Newcastle for a bit. And going back to that substitution, I forgot to mention this, Cissé came off at the same time as these substitutions. Now in the last 10 minutes, and you're a manager under the cosh, as in Pardew, his job's on the line, why would you take the striker that scored you two goals off, and then you bring in Riviera, who I don't think scored in the Premier League yet, I could be wrong in saying that, but he didn't really have a much of an influence onto it. Yes, he did look more lively with the ball, but as I said, Cissé was prolific for four yards out. Um I think it's very bizarre by Alan Pardew. So as I said, end of the game, happy with a point. I think on the terms of Newcastle now, where do they go forward? I think that they have to sack Alan Pardew. Because you, the fans in, in the way end were singing like, you're football of shit, you're football of shit. When, you, when you're the manager, you don't really want that. And if you haven't got the support, of, the support from the supporters, you're not really going to progress as a team. Uh, now I think he's put down the foundations there, as stupid as it sounds, for a new manager to come in and they can progress massively. As I mentioned, their fitness is immaculate. You bring in someone with an idea and an ethos, I think Newcastle potentially this season could finish in the top 10. Then next season build upon that and challenge for Europe. When I say challenge for Europe, I don't mean no guarantee to get there, but I think they'll be competing with the likes of Spurs and everything for that last European spot. Um, if you do sack Pardew though, who can you bring in? Now you could bring in like someone like Tony Pulis, who I think would steady the ship there, and I think they'll definitely avoid relegation. But I think Newcastle should be aiming higher than that. You know, Newcastle are one of the biggest clubs in England, and they should really be getting European football week in, week out. If that makes any sense, I know it's not week in, week out. It's like midweek, anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, a lot to th think about on this. Um, I think Newcastle, this two-week break coming up, they should get their manager. I think we need to build upon it. Monk has a lot to work on during the, uh, the international break. And um, I think maybe the game after that, we can progress. And I think we should go for the win. Because I was pretty happy with what I've seen. It's just disappointed that we didn't get the win. Anyway, this is my first review. I hope you liked it. It's about very long. I'm looking at the time now. It says 14 minutes and 30 seconds, which is a bit long. But, you know, it's my first one. I'll learn and I'll get it more compact for the future. Thank you for watching, uh, leave any comments you can think of below about what you like about it, what you don't like about it, whatever. Thanks for watching, I'm Sean and I'll see you in a bit. Bye bye.